Hello and welcome. In this video, you will see a practical Sizer example. We'll take the to-do list application, which currently uses absolute positioning, and redo the layout with Sizers so it scales nicely. Let's open the to-do list project and get to work. We start by declaring a new private method in mainframe.h. I'll call it set up sizes. All our sizer code will be written inside this method. We'll call it from the constructor after create controls. Before we begin writing sizer code, we'll make a few changes in create controls. Our controls are currently positioned on screen using absolute positioning and a fixed size. Since we now want sizers to handle the layout, let's remove all position and size arguments. For the headline text, we can also remove the alignment style. The input field must keep its style, so we'll explicitly set its size and position to the default values. For the remaining controls, we just remove the position and size arguments. If I start the application now, all controls appear on top of each other in their default position, the upper left corner. So in setup sizes, the first thing I'll do is hide all the controls. I will show them one by one as we add them to a sizer. Ok, let's break down the layout of our application. Our controls are laid out in a column. The headline text is at the top. Below that we've got the input field and the add button. Then we've got the checklist box and finally the clear button. Because the controls are laid out in a column, it makes sense to use a vertical box sizer. I'll call it main sizer. Next, let's make the sizer responsible for the layout. Because I'm using a panel, we first assign the sizer to it. And then call set size hints passing in the frame. Now we can make headline text visible and add it to the sizer. It should be centered, so we'll use a sizer flex object with center horizontal. If I start the application, the headline text appears at the top and it is horizontally centered even if I resize the window. There should be a gap between the window's top and the text, but we'll first build a rough layout and then take care of such details later. Below the headline text, we need to display both the input field and the add button. But how can we position them side by side in a vertical box sizer? We've seen that sizer children can be controls or empty space, but they can also be other sizers. So let's create a horizontal box sizer called input sizer. To this sizer, we add the input field. It should stretch horizontally. So we set its proportion to 1. The add button should also be a child of the input sizer. For this control, the default flex will work. 
Now we can add the input sizer as a child of main sizer. Let's see how that looks. The input field and add button appear side by side below the headline. So that's good. But the input field does not stretch. We must allow the input sizer itself to stretch horizontally. Because it's a child of a vertical box sizer, we must use the expand flag. Now the input field stretches horizontally. Next, we have the checklist box. It must stretch in both directions. Since we are using a vertical box sizer, expand will make it stretch horizontally. and a positive proportion will make it stretch vertically. The checklist box now stretches in both directions to fill any extra available space. The final control we need to add is the clear button. It should be left aligned without any stretch, so we just use the default flex. Our preliminary layout is now ready. We've added all the controls and they behave correctly when the window is resized. The next step is to add some space between our controls. We could do that by giving them appropriate borders, but I'll add some spaces instead. I want a gap of 25 pixels below the headline text. Five pixels between the input field and add button. Five pixels between the input size of row and the checklist box. And finally, five pixels between the checklist box and the clear button. That looks much better, but our controls are too close to the borders of the window. We need some space along the window borders. This can be achieved by specifying a bunch of borders on our controls, but I'll show you an easier solution. We'll create a grid sizer called outer sizer. It needs one row and one column without any gap. For that, this is the most convenient constructor to use. We can now make our main sizer a child of outer sizer. This allows us to specify a border for our entire layout. I'll use 25 pixels on all four sides. The main sizer should also stretch both horizontally and vertically. Because outer sizer is a grid sizer, the expand flag will do exactly that. The final step is to set the panel sizer to outer sizer instead of main sizer. And we also need to replace it in the call to set size hints. There we have it. Our to-do list application now handles resizing gracefully. I hope you now understand how to build more complex layouts simply by nesting box sizes and grid sizes. Next time I will explain why your application may look blurry and how to fix that issue. Thank you for watching.